Well, I certainly wasn't expecting this. Here we have the Geekom IT13 2025 edition. A new update to the two IT13 minis reviewed in the previous two years. There's been a CPU swap, but that's not all. During the review process, I noticed many other welcome improvements, which we'll be going over shortly. What hasn't changed is its appearance. It looks exactly the same, with the outer plastic shell reinforced with a metal frame inside it. Intel's i9-13900HK CPU replaces the previous top IT13 model, which had the i9-13900H, without the K. What's the difference? Very good question. I struggled to find the answer myself. It turns out the 13900H has vPro Enterprise eligibility, while the HK has only the essentials. Whoa. Yep, core count, clock speeds, all the same with a total of 14 mixed cores and 20 threads. Still, Geekom says the IT13 2025 edition outperforms the previous i9-13900H model by around 10%. I'm assuming that's in multi-core, and we'll see if that's the case. First improvement of many with the 2025 edition is that it comes with a much more compact power supply than the previous release. Otherwise, the accessories remain the same with the HDMI cable and VESA mount. Geekom's 2025 edition mini PC comes in at $659 US on the official website, and there's a 5% off code that brings it down to $626. It's also available on Amazon.com. Geekom is one of the few brands to offer a 3-year warranty on all its mini PCs. Oh, and for Aussies, I was given a 12% off coupon to share specifically for the Australian store. It's Robbie Tit 13 Yep, that's how I see it. Okay, for the ports, there's dual USB 3 10 gigabit on the front, with one of them being a higher power charging port. Also, a 3.5mm audio jack is included. On the left side is a full-size SD card reader. Nice. And like practically every mini PC, inside it is an M.2 wireless card for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. On the back is a 19 volt barrel jack connector, dual USB 4 40 gigabit with neither supporting USB power delivery, Intel 2.5 gigabit LAN, dual HDMI 2.0, and USB 3 10 gigabit as well as USB 2. If you've ever opened up an Intel NUC, this mini is identical with four screws on the rubber feet to unscrew and then lift the bottom lid while watching out for the 2.5 inch SATA ribbon cable. There's a thermal pad for the 2280 Gen 4 NVMe drive for heat dissipation. There isn't a thermal pad included for the M.2 2240 SATA slot. Not many minis can support three storage drives, so nice to see that here. Underneath the OS NVMe drive is an M.2 Wi-Fi card, and there's two sticks of DDR4 3200 RAM included. Windows Elon Pro is bundled and the OS is malware free. Ubuntu has no issues running on this mini if you want to make the switch. Alright, on to the benchmarks. Single core Cinebench shows a minute improvement over the 13900H and 13700H. In multi-core, it's the fastest of the three IT13s out of the box. Just. The performance mode in the BIOS, which didn't show any improvement for the previous units, now actually does its job and gives a nice 16% increase. However, even then, the 13900HK can do more, with a high power limit like the GMK Tech K10 here. Geekom's performance mode power limit is equal to the K10's balance mode. While I don't have the previous IT13 data for Geekbench, the 2025 edition is in a similar spot as it was in Cinebench in both single core and multi core. In performance mode, it matches the Core Ultra 5 125H. Geekbench scores are affected by memory bandwidth. And that's one reason why the K10 with DDR5 wins out even with its default PAL limit. Encoding a H.264 video file is faster out of the box than the previous models and in performance mode easily beats them. Once again, it's behind the fastest 13900HK tested so far. Still, multi-core CPU performance is faster over the previous IT13s as Geekom claimed in its marketing. Longer AV1 video encode chart is missing the older IT13 data, however, comparing to the K10, it narrows the gap a bit. Moving on to the AI CPU benchmark. Two different scores are shown based on the mode set in the BIOS. The best result will be kept for future comparisons. While the 13900HK does decently in quantize, its single and half precision are less impressive, being beaten by the Ryzen 6600H unless you switch to performance mode. That's the AI CPU side. 
Let's switch to GPU. And it does poorly. Even the Ryzen 6600H is coming out ahead. Now onto the 3D Mark iGPU tests. The Firestrike DX11 score at default is worse than the previous IT13s, but with performance mode, it jumps up almost 7.5% and outperforms both slightly. Almost 3.5% improvement over the previous IT13. Either way, it's clearly beaten by many other iGPUs on the chart, including the K10, which comes out ahead thanks to DDR5 memory. As expected, there's no movement in DX12 time spy, it's the same spot on the chart. Steel Nomad Lite DX12 results for the older IT13s aren't here, but nothing has really changed. Overall, it's a bit faster than the 13900H. So while it holds up today as more of a mid-range CPU, the 13900HK is a letdown by its iGPU. One of the ideal usage cases for this Mini is as a video editing workstation. While not as snappy as the latest Intel chips, the i9 still provides a good 4K editing experience. The 13900HK's best feature is the hardware video decoder, which allows you to edit many formats in 4K with relatively snappy performance. So I'm glad the full-size SD card slot is included, as it's very useful. This Mini will also be fine for other software in the Adobe suite, with Intel CPUs being well supported. One other area this Mini does well is with audio. The IT13 2025 edition passes the audio latency test with Cinebench running in the background. Plenty of Minis have failed this test. So, while not the fastest, it's worth considering for audio and video use. Where it won't do well is in gaming. XE Graphics doesn't hold up for much other than eSports games that put the emphasis on the CPU. These games are okay at 1080p, whether it's Valorant or League of Legends. Counter-Strike 2 requires more GPU power and doesn't do as well. 60fps isn't great for eSports. But the very popular Dota 2 does a lot better. Less performance hungry AAA games like Forza Horizon 5 can get above 30fps at 1080p low, but others like Cyberpunk 2077 are a natively rendered pipe dream, and even with upscaling, don't hit 30fps. And as another example, it's the same with Baldur's Gate 3. To play these types of games, you're going to need to hook up an eGPU using the USB 4 port, and unfortunately, I couldn't get mine to work, with it disconnecting shortly after detecting it. Geek on my looking into the issue, and I'll update in the comments if I hear something new. The 13900HK still holds up fine for Wii U emulation. Getting above 30fps or full speed in Breath of the Wild means the whole game library should be fine. PS3 is more challenging as the iGPU gets hit harder. Performance will depend on the game, and you might have to drop the resolution. The Gen 4 SSD is a decent performer, and cooling for it held up fine with no thermal throttling detected. Bluetooth range is excellent, taking 4th spot on the list. I didn't have any major issues with wireless internet at 12 meters or 39 feet from the router using the 5G band. It was tested playing a full game of Valorant. The game client is quick to point out any dropouts or latency problems. Idle power draw is down by 1 watt over the previous units, coming in at 11 watts. And there's been a huge drop in max power draw. The previous IT13s were hitting as high as 115 watts, while now even performance mode is down over 20. And with better performance no less. The trend of making improvements continues with the maximum CPU temp. It's a bit better than both previous IT13 units. One of my biggest issues with the original IT13 minis was the fan noise at idle and that the fan curve seemed to be all over the place. That's also been fixed here. Fan behavior is normal, with the idle being quiet, while the fan speed and performance does actually increase when choosing the performance mode. That being said, it's not a quiet mini PC, with fan noise on the upper end for its default mode. All the Geekom IT13 minis are the same size which is smaller than the average mini PC tested. Mashing the delete key on startup gets you into the BIOS. And it's another improvement with Geekom placing all the common options people look for in the advanced tab. 
Previously, most options were unavailable. You've got Wake on Land, Power Loss Policy, Power Mode, and Fan Options. Increasing the memory frequency doesn't do anything, if you were wondering. 3200MHz with DDR4 is the maximum. Okay, that's everything covered. Geekom's IT13 2025 fixes a lot of issues mentioned in my previous reviews. Large power supply, excessive power draw, missing BIOS settings, strange fan curve, and performance mode not working. All fixed or improved. Not many minis can support three storage drives, so nice to see that here. Wireless range is good. A three year warranty is included. However, integrated graphics performance is low. Load fan noise in the bouts mode is higher than average. There's no upgrade to DDR5 or USB-C power delivery, and the price is higher than other 13900HK minis out there. So this is for those that want the integrated SD card slot and three year warranty. I don't know if my previous complaints specifically made a difference, but most of them have been addressed with the Geekom IT13 2025 edition. And in the end, that's all that matters. It's not just a refresh with a new CPU, Geekom has gone back and made many changes for the better. That being said, the price of entry for the performance on offer is high, and before you go, do check out my review of the Geekom A6 Mini, which is pitched as a value option featuring the Ryzen 6800H CPU. You can find that review right here. Cheers!